Som veľmi šťastný, že Dan je tu s nami. Výstavu samotnú otvoríme o hodinu, diskusiou s ním, diskusiou o Rusku, Ukrajine, o jeho dôvodoch, pre ktoré sa rozhodol nezúčastniť sa významnej svetovej prehliadky Manifesta 10 v Petrohrade, čiže o témach, ktoré hýbu svetom, o situácii, ktorá nás samých sa nielen dotýka, ale aj ohrozuje. I'm all, very happy to be part of a beginning. Vždy som rád, keď môžem byť súčasťou nejakého začiatku. Well, actually we are midway now here, right? Hoci tu sme vlastne niekde na polceste. This midway. So I'm, I'm happy na poli. to be part of the midway or something which, which is in progress. Who can turn out to be extraordinary. Vždy chcem byť súčasťou niečoho, čo je ešte len vo vývoji a čo má potenciál stať sa niečím výnimočným. A vždy je to oveľa ťažšie byť súčasťou niečoho takého, lebo, lebo je to vlastne veľká zodpovednosť. Vidíme to nad sebou. A vždy je zaujímavé pozor- hovoriť k ľuďom, ktorí pozerajú nad nad, nad, nad mňa. Well, well, for me it was a, um, a extraordinary occasion to bring here a practice which I developed the last 15 years. Uh, bolo to pre mňa veľmi, je to špeciálna príležitosť priniesť sem tú svoju prax, ktorú, na, ktorú rozvíjam už viac ako 15 rokov. I'm academically trained as a painter, as you see. Uh, ako vidíte, Uh, alebo možno si nemi, alebo nevidíte, uh, som akademicky vyučený maliar. Každú novú výstavu, ktorú urobím, tak vždy zabudnem niečo z toho, čo ma naučili. And sooner or later I'll be completely free. A, za, a čím a týmto spôsobom sa rastanem úplne slobodný. Trošku srandujem, ale toto je tiež pre mňa vlastne istý proces. I'm usually active in larger, bigger, famous platforms. Zvyčajne ma volajú na také trošku slávnejšie, väčšie, prestížnejšie e, priestory, muzeá. And this is one chance to share this practice in a different circumstance, in a different context. A toto je pre mňa príležitosť, ako môžem zdieľať túto prax v trochu inom kontexte. Well, and the last week here I was working and a lot of other people were working around me. A vlastne túto svoju výstavu som venoval ľuďom, ktorí pracujú na tomto, na tomto, na tomto projekte. They work harder than me. Pracujú oveľa ťažšie než ja. And this exhibition is a celebration for this entire fantastic team from Stanica. A táto výstava chce byť oslavou alebo môjim príspevkom k oslave tohto fantastického týmu. Pozrite sa, aké mám tričko. As you see, I'm the only one wearing the t-shirt. They pay me for. <laughs> Lebo mi za to zaplatili. <laughs> Thank you very much and please stay for the discussion. Ďakujem a prosím vás, zostaňte na debatu. Talking about the events, historical moments, uh, uh, you commenting historical moments, uh, we choose this politics, this drawing as the, as the main visual message for the exhibition. You were so generous to, to draw it again here uh, in synagogue. Maybe we will keep it. And anyway, the, the drawing comes from 19 January, uh, February, uh, a reaction to what happened in Maidan, uh, when historians uh, will work on uh, beginning of 21st century, I guess 18th February 2014 will be the date, because that was the moment when uh, shooting in Maidan took place, more than 100 people dead. Uh, nobody knows who was shooting till now. Uh, uh, Dan, what do you think uh, 
how, how you perceive the situation of uh, Ukraine, what is Ukraine issue about relating to us in Zhilina now? Well, first of all, I want to ask you if, if it's okay. You're here. English is okay. You have translation. Everybody sit down. We're comfortable. Well, I have three bottles of, of, uh, of water, so I, I will not leave until I drink them all. So just be prepared. Well, now, about your question. Well, it's very complicated to answer to this such a thing. I, I'm an artist. This is my... This is not an objective point of view here. This is my take in what's going on. And my take can fail. Or I can miss the point. Or uh, I can be off the subject. Or I, can, I cannot cover all the subjects and all the nuances, right? So this is a, a reaction I have on what's going on in this very moment in the planet, on the planet. But this drawing you choose for the poster, I don't remember the date. I was following the events, and you know why? Because people in my country, and maybe in yours, they got bored of Europe. They are tired of Europe. And these are some people in another country who want to be part of it or at least a part of the Maidan want to be part of it. They want to change geography, right? Well, my geography was changed. I'm, I was born in Romania, and after the fall of communists, in the first exhibition I was presented to the outer world, I was presenting like this, East Central European artist. And I show with you, Slovaks and Czechs and Hungarian. And then this was at the beginning of the 90s. At the mid of 90s, I was an exhibition of East European artists. I lose, lost you, but I gained like a southern nation, you know, Bosniaks, Serbs. And at the end of the 90s, I was showing an exhibition called Artists from Southeast Europe. And then, after the turn of the century, artists from the Balkans. And I never moved from Bucharest. So what is geography? To whom you belong? So I, I was sympathetic with the people in, in Maidan because they want to belong to a different geography. They want to belong to a projection, you know, like we want. Maybe we are here and we are not happy because the projection was too big and the reality is not so interesting. So, uh, for me it was, well, I was asked earlier if artists can, can save the world or, you know, solve conflicts. Tanks and bombs can We cannot. If politicians do a mess, if the politician decide for a tragedy, we cannot do nothing, right? And what's happening in Ukraine was a politician decision, right? That's why politics become graves. So I tried to be, in a way, from where I was, and this is very interesting because Romania and Ukraine don't have good relation because of the Danube and whatever. Black Sea, we, we want a piece of Black Sea, they want a piece of Black Sea because we all think it's oil there. We didn't have very good relation, but it was automatically sim sympathy to see these people really fighting for their chance in the 21st century to belong to a different geography. Yeah. And there is, there is an empire, a, Ru a Russian empire, who is, which is trying to defend, which is in reaction to, to the call for, of Ukraine to get to become a part of West, uh, sending troops, uh, but not only, uh, broadcasting videos, uh, uh, screwing the internet, doing all sorts of things. Uh, in the situation, in this very situation, uh, a prestigious uh, biennale called Manifesta, which is officially 
ambassador of European Commission in the field of contemporary art. Maybe you don't know, but they have this plaquette. So this ambassador of European Commission in the field of contemporary art is getting into Hermitage in Petrograd, uh, trying to do what, in your opinion, what was the aim of Manifesta in this situation after, Crime after Maidan, after Crimea, after Malaysian airline? What, 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 was the, what, was, what was the sense they articulated it has? Well, for the people who don't know what the Biennale is, this is a big show happening every other two years. And this is a capitalistic definition. You need two years to prepare a show and you make it more fantastic, right? So manifest it's a spe special Biennale because it's traveling. I was part of Manifesta number two in Luxembourg. This is a tiny nation in, in Europe. Well, and the idea of this show is like every other two years to present to the world what's new. What are the new positions? Well, in the last years, they changed it a little bit because either it was not enough new or they become more smart. So they try to present a relevant position in Europe, right? Well, the decision where to do this manifesta is not conceptual, but is money-based. Who give the money more, get the show. It's three million. Three million, million euros. Euro. Or get the logo, and then they can fundraise, whatever. So the decision was to do it in St. Petersburg. And in a way, the, at the first glance, it was interesting because it, this is breaking the dominance of Moscow, right? What do you know about Russia? You know Moscow, right? You don't know much about St. Petersburg. You don't know much about any other city. Maybe you know, I don't. So at the beginning, it, it seems, seemed interesting, right? And also this idea to host it in the most, uh, you know, hermitage. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, you know. Um, but then it, it, well, well, like any other things in our life, maybe, not good? I was, uh, you didn't listen to me until now, right? <laughs> but you look so <laughs> attentive. Anyways, like anything which happens today, you may be interested in parties, right? You may not be interested in political art or social art at all. But regardless, the society around the party is political. So sooner or later, somebody will take the plug out and the music will stop. So this is happening with Manifesta. It starts with good intention. Let's bridge the Russian <laughs> and Europe. Yeah? You manifest as a European Biennale, so the fact that it was put in, in Russia is like Eurovision. We are singing together, right? We don't have the t same tanks, but we are singing together. So this was the idea, right? So to bridge it, it starts well, and then uh, Sochi Olympics, and then Crimea invasion. So things start to go nowhere. Well. If you ask me, any manifesta is problematic. In this case, it just came into our face somehow, because it was a decision what to do. Are you going to, with a show which is confirmed, which is confirming, or which is, a, how to say, it's a, giving some credits to the government who invade an independent country? Are you, are you into this project, somehow giving the power to this kind of guy who do this kind of decision? Or you step out? But then it was this discussion, and I remember very well, I don't know how many of you lived in the communist time, and I don't really know how the Czechoslovak communist was, but in my country it was brutal. It was brutal, and we have been isolated from the rest of the world. So any kind of exhibition from West coming was like, 
you know, like, oh, even if it was posters from Poland or, you know, like a U.S. exhibition about NASA, it was like a, a light coming. So the first idea was, even with this show in Russia, saying, well, this is a, you know, the local community in St. Petersburg may be helped. You can imagine in an totalitarian regime, artist life is not easy. An international show has come to your city, it's, it's like your relatives are coming, so you're not alone. So this is good. And this is exactly the position which... Uh, there are two, basically. Boycotts, people signing petitions against taking part in manifesta, people dismissing people the artist taking part in manifesta. And the second position is exactly that. This is the only thing we have in hands to help dissident groups, na still existing now in Russia, organizing peace marches in Moscow and Petrograd, to help them, to show them solidarity, to show them that we are not putting our hands off their problems, because they have to live there. And all we can do is to at least come, at least come and, you know, say, say something. How did you, did you have in mind this kind of arguments? Well, well, as I told you, I was in 2007 Moscow Biennale. And it was, that was a very chaotic show. And uh, it was made on a premises of a new, you know, like a big tower, the Federation Tower, which was part of a development of a new reach and built with exploited workers. So you can do this, but actually the premises you are showing are based on an enormous inequality. So I was faced this, this I think this is Russia, it's a double, triple reality. You don't know which is the real. You, you don't know how this change. So first I said I will go to St. Petersburg Manifesta. I was even, you know, when you are invited to a big show, you say, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, they confirm your status in the art world. Yeah, fantastic. And then the things start to deteriorate. And I, I don't know if you are familiar with this, uh, the fact that the Louvre, which is one, one of the biggest museums representing the Western canon, right? Louvre will open a branch in Abu Dhabi, right? Now imagine that they cannot say, show Greek culture because this is naked, naked men and women, right? So what we will go for the sheikhs will be impressionism and cubism. <laughs> so they cannot show no renaissance, naked men and women. They, sh they can show only pre-modern and modern art, right? Well, but this is happening now. Why is Louvre going to Abu Dhabi? Well, if you go in Emirates, in museums, one entry is for men and one for women. And you have to accept that. So we are talking now St. Petersburg, but this problem is much wider. It's much more complex. And Leah and I, we just came from um, um, Sao Paulo Biennale. And at the, at the Sao Paulo Biennale, in the last week before opening, you imagine people working two years and in the last seven days, some artists have a problem with one logo from the sponsors, like you see that sponsor. Because it was a political decision. If, if you accept to have that sponsor logo onto your show or not. Well, believe me, any logo have problems, bigger or smaller, right? So it's up to each individual artist where it draws the line and how thick the line is, right? So I thought, I, I, my intention was really to go to Manifesta in St. Petersburg, but then Crimea happens and then the things were, were so brutally, well, well, you see how I do, right? 
you see what I, what I work. I work with actuality. So imagine me going in Hermitage and doing this. There's no way. And I'm a... I don't look, but I'm a very responsible artist. Because I know very well the artist's position is very comfortable. I come here, I make this, and I go home. But you stay. And Marek stays, right? And people who are in this building, they stay here and they have to face politics and they have to have face the public who don't know contemporary art looks like this. Maybe they have to have Jewish people who they have this in, you know. So I have a very big responsibility and I knew it for Manifesta. I go there and what I will do, I'll, I'll try to make more soft, not to address Putin at all. So I said, well, let's not have this problem. And I, I will not go, and I don't want to make a big fuss about it. I just don't, don't go. I think people who went have their own reason. My point now is that it's the issue of morality. This dilemma when choosing black or white, when facing like two. Uh, it, 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 such issue we know from communist era that because the world there are million shades of gray this is the true i mean this is the life we live being in moral dilemma is an extreme position we should not face moral dilemmas in free society very often uh, what, ha what happens in russia now in my view is exactly that you are facing a dilemma taking part or not taking part, and each decision you take, yes or no, is morally legitimate. So, in consequence of this reflection, of this, it must mean that the situation is irrational in, to an extent that it makes no sense to, to take part, to engage, because it's irrational. There is, nobody knows anymore what is black, what is white, yes or no, yes becoming no, no becoming yes. This double thing uh, mm, makes the, everybody's right, you know, everybody's wrong. It's up to you how we, pub, how we produce the public image of, this, of the background of these decisions. Uh, what do you know about image of your boycotting in Petrohrad? What is the reflection of the art community? What did Kaspar Koenig tell you? Or what do you, what is the, I mean, the consequences of, of, of the, what, how, how the debate looks like now in Russia, in Petrohrad, at Manifesta, about these things? Well, I have no idea. And frankly, I don't care. Like, I was put in the situation I have to choose. And don't, don't think I'm like a hero or doing whatever, no. Well, I try to, to take the, the most decent option. Well, at a certain moment there was a letter circulating in the art world and there's a friend of mine, a very important and interesting artist called Yuri Lederman. He is from Odessa. And he was part of first manifesto. And he wrote an open letter to everybody saying, well, I will ask you to not go. And I said, well, I will go by Yuri statement. I don't know if I did right, really. And therefore I told you, I was invi I'm invited to go in October for like a discussion like this in Hermitage with Kasper Koenig. Kasper Koenig is a curator from Germany. He is quite old and he is one of the capo di tutti capi in the <laughs> contemporary Kunst. And uh, at the beginning of my career, he invited me to do this in one major German museum and that boosted my career very much and he was very, very cool. So I not owe him something, but we have a certain partnership. And when I got invited, I was happy about it, and then it put me in a very awkward situation to say, well, I can't. First, I tried to do like a compromise. I really, I tried to do what politicians should do. 
to find a compromise. And the compromise was to create a blog, so not being there, but being here and commenting on what's going on and maintain some kind of a freedom under the umbrella. Well, and at the end, when things deteriorate very badly, when, can you imagine, you know these this missiles who, who shut down a civilian airplane, right? Hundreds of kids died, right? Do you ever hear something about that? Well, that's happening. And that happens because of Russian involvement. So can you imagine if, if I will be part of that and now I have to face this situation, how can I, right? So I didn't want to enter this. Um, and I didn't want to make like the big example because I'm not, I'm telling you, there are arguments for what you say. But I will contradict you. I think I'm right. I don't give you the benefit of, well, this is equal this. No. No. This is why my drawings are black and white. Well, I, I believe situation in human society are very complex and we are all lazy. Because we are, we are making a statement about a life and death situation based on a TV show. We don't have time to read, we don't have to, time to go there to research, we don't have time to, you know, and, but we still believe this is this and this is that. On the other hand, you have to take some stance. You like it or not, you have to take some stance today. That's, that's what's going on. And this is the so to say, a uh, uh, heritage which we bear, which we wear in our rucksacks. The heritage from the past era, from pre-89 era. Uh, exactly this pos posi positioning of ourselves in being in dilemmas. There was a very strong metaphor in Czechoslovakia from Václav Havel saying in early 1990s, he said that we should draw a thick line behind the past because otherwise we cannot somehow move further, we cannot progress anymore because we will always be compromised with all kinds of debates about how was it and why was it and, and etc. So we, we should forget, so to say. And uh, it was a very powerful metaphor which enabled flourishing of the new era. But it didn't diminish. I mean, the, the, the old era is in the mindset of the people who are still here in the very powerful positions. And what we see now is this reenactment of old conflicts. What we see now is this cold war, this nationalism, all these things getting back. And us not, so to say, ready for them, because we have this experience from 90s when everything was possible, when world was ours. When people from West was calling you on the phone, come and show, and they don't care anymore. So, my question is now about you as a member of that generation, having two, standing in two eras, communists, free, capitalists. Uh, do you think communism I was a painter? <laughs> Uh, uh, if I would say you are to blame as a guy as a guy who somehow you know let the regime partly in a very small part co collaborated with the regime some, in some way is this something which is too offensive to you? Well, I caught the, when I graduate the Art Academy, this was already 1985. So I was having five more years to go <laughs> in the, one of the most stupid society in the planet. So I was like a bit young to realize what's going on. And, and believe me, this is also very interesting. I have no idea what your background and how much are you curious about contemporary art. 
But when we graduate and what we, when we learn art history in Romania, communist Romania, we, we cannot stop before Picasso. So when we were able to travel for the first time in 1990 after the collapse of communism, the art of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s hit us at once. And it was one of the most terrifying experiences we could ever had. Because well, we didn't knew, and it was extraordinary. And we, we, we become like bulimics in getting all this. So in a certain sense, in that, those moments, we put a lot of our belief in art because we found it extraordinary and very interesting. And all these 60s artists with this really radical art, I mean, Today, when you hear about the Radical Project, it's mainly a joke made for the Basel Art Fair. So, like really fantastic. So then, we want to be part of that, that family, right? And I don't know about you, but yeah, and I, we come from a culture, we are not very happy with our culture. We didn't think we did great. I think we did a lot of shit. And I think in communist time, we did a lot of shit. And the art in Romania was not good. So our family was here and there and everywhere, right? So for us, it was fa fabulous to connect with this family and this thinking. Well, and then when you start to show in the museum you dream about, and you see the things are not exactly... <laughs> and then you are very disappointed, so you become more critical. Very critical, because this is a promise. Me as an artist, I'm in a very luxurious situation. I, I'm given this platform, right? For what, three months? I'm paid for, right? I'm taken care for, and I have to express. But this is like utopia. <laughs> utopia I realize. So, of course, I want to do the best I can with this. I want to be good and I want to do important statement. And I want to say, well, I choose. This is my option. This is my option. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you have your own option. So then go and find your own wall. Go and find your own space. And don't go and criticize the United States. You know, if you have a problem with the United States. Uh, if you have a statement to do, find the place to do it. I, I do this as honest as possible. And I think, I told you earlier, yeah, we may be fucked up. This, uh, we, we were the generation who were supposed to create this kind of institution which were missing in my country. We try. But the circumstances were not good, so we failed. Every, every institution, we, we fought very hard to do it, like the the Museum of Contemporary Art, the, the center for... But look, they, when they establish, they establish in so boring way, that we, we, we don't like it. So what our option, finally, as artists, we be one, individual, and this is coming from a communist time, we didn't trust nobody. I, I don't trust in you. I trust in myself. My, Leah is different. Um, she, I, I was trusting in my career, so I tried to demonstrate something doing this by myself. She's, trust, she's trying to do a statement, and she's doing a statement building institution. No, not really established, but acting as so. So in a kind of disguised institution. And it's functioning. But we both suffer from this kind of lack of cohesion because this, our generation was completely uh, destroyed and manipulated by the old society. Yeah, and, look, and this is it. Because this is a success story. Of course, it's still a ruin. Success. It's a success story. You are an A-class artist. Well, if you show in uh, Kunsthalle Zilina, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did it to Tate. You did it to MoMA. Uh, we talk here in English. We have a new floor. I was floor. not so free in MoMA. OK. But we have a new floor. We have... This is still, we are those who did it, so to say. And my question is about those who failed, about those who didn't did it, you know, about those who didn't step on the train, about those millions of them here in the post-communist countries. And the question is, 
because it's a majority of, of us, you know. Well, there, there first are a lot of, of all, people. there were a lot of landscape painters. Fuck them. Sorry. Who the fuck cares about landscapes? Then it was the still life painter. Fuck the still life. Then it was very interesting people, smart, developing their career, and they first they kind of got manipulated into the anti-establishment, anti-religion. It was very hot the beginning of the 90s. And then the West looks in a different idea and they left with production, nobody cares. Well, you have to think. It's a global society, we are all competing with everybody. If you, if you think of this as a competition, if you don't think, you are a free. You are a free person. Then you can find your platforms, like this one here. This is fantastic. You can't do that in other parts. So, what we learn, and what I learn, is how to make a choice. It's about Where ambitions. It's about ambitions. No. No? No. Well, I want to be, to be, to be part of something which is bur burning, is real, is working. The rest is like, well, I have to gain my money. So I go. No. I mean, the, um, it's different stories. Just imagine, I'm, I'm doing this. One, I don't want to, I want to control my art. So I don't want to leave you with works behind. These have to be painted over, right? So I'm controlling what I'm saying because I don't trust any curator to reassemble my art after I'm, the, I'm gone. So this is a type of control. This is also coming from communism. I was so much time control. I want to control things now. So I don't believe that, you know, even there, you see, I didn't want to do the drawing only on panel, right? I just did half of it on panel because this can be dismantled and sold, right? Now it's not a complete drawing. They cannot sell it. So this is a type of control of the presence and economy. Just look around. I try to avoid things I cannot, you know. And this is coming also, this is a, a mechanism I invented in order to protect myself by the market. What means market? Somebody is putting a price on you? How? Why my works 15 years ago cost one way one price and now they are 10 times more and I'm the same, I'm doing the same thing. What did it change? So this is it, it's a temporary, this is like a performance. I perform and my dance is three months and then I'm gone, right? So you, this, is a, this is a mechanism to protect the coherence of my discourse. I don't know, when you asked me, when you told me that there will be some other people your project to make some some statements or some inter interventions. So I said, well, I kind of don't like this in a way because I don't know who these people are. I don't know what they will do. So then I left, left for them a clean wall. So in parallel, we can work. Together, I don't know. I really don't know. But parallel in the, in the, in the same cupola, yes. Do you believe the art, artists, art, can, does, does it have the potential to contribute to our transformation of the country? Yes. In what sense? Absolutely. In what well, sense? Well, we don't make life beautiful, but we can make it deeper. Deeper, more profound. And what if the majority of people doesn't care about the deepness, about they the depth? They don't care anyways. They don't care. The majority don't care. And that's it. It's not necessarily their fault. Well, if somebody comes here and feels outraged by this, well, what can I say? He or she maybe was never exposed. What kind of art do you learn in school? What kind of, you know, I always say this, a kid have the same spontaneity and, you know, Kids know to draw, like, like an instinct. It's like a language. It comes with us. Nobody can explain why. And then they go to kindergarten, and that's it. And at 12 years old, they are the most horrible creature you can imagine, because just mimicking, copying, 
the most stupid image you can imagine, right? So I try to escape this situation. I try to give audience the feeling that everybody can do this, which, which practically is true. The question is what subject and how? How you visualize an, an idea? And this here, at this top, 80% of the population of the planet fail to visualize something. And this is very funny because today everybody is making photography, put them on Facebook. Everybody is communicating by images, but they are not trained to do so. Nobody knows exactly what does it mean if you are with a cat in the picture or without a cat. If you are small in the picture or big in the picture, right? But they still, people put on Facebook and Twitter, they tweet images with themselves. This is very funny. Anyways, what I want to say is um, I cannot be angry on people who don't get it and on majority. They've never been maybe exposed to this. How can you tell you this is contemporary art and they come here maybe and they expect paintings? And this is nothing wrong with art. You expect what you know. My last question now. Uh, and then the floor for you. Uh, how you conceive this idea of democracy, this de democratic idea of, or, or this democratic ideal? What is it? What do you think? What it means? How, 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 how you understand it? Raised, being raised in totalitarian regime, having well, this freedom now. Well, I don't know if people in this audience realize that they are living now in a political construction who guarantee by law their rights. We are all in European Union who is the only political construction who guarantee your human rights, legally. So you have the chance to beat your own state. If you sue your own country, you can win, if you're right. So I think this is it. We have to cherish this and we have to not, not lose it through our fingers, right? We have somehow to build on it. Because this is, as, as it looks bureaucratic, whatever Brussels, blah, blah, whatever Germany running, whatever all this, as it looks kind of bad now, it's still a fantastic platform for free expression, for dem democratic. I don't say things are good. I don't say this. If you go in any city in Europe, in any city in Europe, you may find examples which horrify, from slave trades to sex trades to whatever. Whatever you want to choose, you can have horrifying example. But the middle of this is pretty good. So it's up to us as citizens how we increase the quality of this democ democracy. Well, if you, if, you, if you think about majority and, you know, people voting and, well, shaping your life, then you realize um, you may have some question about this democracy, right? But I don't know any other um, human way of doing things better than this. Sometimes with my friends from the West, which are very, very left, are very, very critical on, on the society we live. And I say, well, if they are too, they become too kind of communistic. And I say, well, I've been in that utopia. It didn't work. <laughs> it's like in Star Wars or something. I'm coming back in time. It, it doesn't work. I've been there. So you have to, we have to find some, something else, <laughs> much clever and much more, you know, interesting, I think. Well, for the moment, I think democracy is one way. And maybe we should uh, work about the quality of this democracy. Um, and not about the system in itself, right? Questions? Well, but who am I to say? I'm not a theoretical artist. I'm an artist based on experience. I fight the walls and I learn. I don't learn from books. Questions? No one's, everyone's afraid. Oh, oh. Done. Uh, I will speak English. Yeah. <laughs> you, you said that uh, you opposed Fedor uh, in this opinion that you were right when refusing the uh, going to manifesta. 
and that uh, your paintings or drawings are black and white, so you see, uh, you, you think you have the Katarina, right position. He, he referred to the fact that uh, uh, much more, I think, philosophical fact, and I'm, I don't get it. Uh, okay, <laughs> I get it. I will, I will try to maybe explain that, uh, that you said that this is, uh, you think you are right, that you have... I have to be right, because I mess your walls here. So I, I have to be, I have to trust in what I say. You know, nuances comes later. But I have to say, well, this is it. And, and you know, uh, do you, are you always that sure about this? Because, you know, or are there questions which you are not sure and then you don't address them or...? No, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. I, I'm... Um... Well, when I enter this space, it looks huge. So, oh, fine, fuck. Then I said, this is white. I, I said, well, they spent so much money to put this white. And I said, I could draw directly on the old paint. Now, if it's white, it's, it's a certain expectation. Then it's, it's rough, so the marker don't go. Don't go easy, so I had to work with charcoal. By the way, the charcoal is produced by Stanitsa. <laughs> Good quality charcoal, if you ever need, you can order. <laughs> uh, so this is new. And how Leah said, it's kind of messy. It it's looked like dirt. And I said, well, it looks like that, you know. So I tried, it didn't work so well. But I kind of like this idea that you don't know now which is marker, which is chalk, so you can destroy some of my drawings, you cannot others. And I kind of like this. And at the end, at, in the last day, because when I start to work, it looks totally different here. It was like a million people working around, crazy noise, it was like but, And then suddenly yesterday, all this white thing come, it looks perfect. And I said, I'm fucked, I have four white things in my installation. So I said, oh, how can I, I didn't want to destroy Marek things, so I said, I could not use the marker, so I put tape. It's the first time I'm using tape. And then Leah said, but you put tape on one, two, and three? Maybe you should put, so you should, so I, what I want to say is I also experiment, this was my studio the last week, and I didn't know it would work out, I try. So I try to do this, to do that, maybe every, every drawing you add at a certain moment is changing the entire composition, right? And then there is a, a, a formal composition, where are the drawings, and then there is a subject composition, what they say. And we, we talk every evening, Leah said, I, I, maybe you need more about that, maybe you need more about that, did you do? So I had to control the content. But it was like an experience. And I never know from the beginning if this will work. So I have to fight with the space. It's, it's, it's like a process. It's like they, they do with the heating here. They don't know how it will work. <laughs> no, if all the warm will go up. <laughs> well, well it, that's your chance to ask. What is your favorite way or usual way to get information? If, if you look at us from a certain perspective, it's the most fantastic life you can have. I'm paid to watch TV or read newspapers or scan the Facebook. That's how I get the information. Newspapers, classical mainstream, alternative, websites or blogs, TV, and then talking with people, because more than half of the drawings you see here are, are not made here, are from pre previous projects. But I don't come with, a, with a, a bunch of drawings with me. I remember them if I'm asked. I had a discussion with him about, with you, about uh, automobiles. I didn't know the Kia here and all this kind of Slovak Detroit. So then, oh, this is an old drawing. I just recontextualize it. 
And so that's how I do. I can't, I can't, I have to, I, I admit, I get bored very quick. That's because Facebook. I cannot read an entire article. Even I'm still working with a, week, uh, a weekly magazine back in Romania, 25 years, every week. Every Monday I have to send them drawings. But I, I told them, don't send me the articles, because I, just send me a resume, like a line, what's it in the article, and then I can make a drawing. Well, that's how I got the information. And I also like, there's another source. It's, uh, um, and this is also, you can do that very easy. It's just purely looking around. Uh, I'd like to ask you if, you if you ever perform at some kind of maybe street art exhibition or can you associate yourself with political street art somehow? Well, this is a bit compli complicated question. Um, well, no. I I'm 12 years academically trained as artist, so I come from the museum, from inside the museum to the streets. They usually try to go the other way around, and they can enter the museum only if they spray a cannabis. Well, I got the freedom to spray whatever. So I didn't want to use even the spray here, just not to... These are different. These don't come from the same context. But I'm watching what's going on because it's uh, quite amazing, quite interesting what's going on on the streets. Well, I have a half, half of what's, half of the graffiti and tags I hate. They look like McDonald's, everywhere the same. I can't understand that. Then I don't like this idea that in 21st century, I think it's not equal where you do your tag. I think it's not enough to do noise. You have to have better motivation than this. But then there's uh, people doing for sure uh, stencil, which are amazing, stickers sometimes. This I found a fantastic idea to have a gallery on the back of a street sign, circulation sign. It's amazing. So I wa I'm, I'm looking to this, um, in a certain sense, a kind of new poetry, no? Uh, it's interesting, and I'm in favor of that, but I'm also critical. Well, I, I, I have this friend in, in Prague, Thomas Vaniek, and he is doing uh, stencil inside the exhibition. And I remember when they passed this law, you, you can get two years in jail in Prague if you make a spray in the historical nice, well, well, and he went out with a special solution, pretending that he is washing this out, but the solution was prepared in order to enhance the color, to make them more brilliant. And the police didn't, can do nothing. He was not spraying, he was like cleaning. <laughs> so I kind of like this attitude. More conceptual, even in street art, more kind of conceptual attitude. Somebody else wants to go to the bar? Yes. One question, uh, going to the bar? Uh, any question at the bar? Ďakujem pekne. Človek nikdy nevie, kedy je ten historický moment, to sa napíše potom neskôr. Od toho sú potom iní, ktorí prepisujú dejiny. Sú takí, čo dejiny Thank you for the translation. And one thing before I go. Okay. Well, my presence here is because 10 years ago my wife, Lia Perzovsky, joined the team of Stanica when they started doing projects in the, that space. So uh, it's not like by just accident. This is part of a long process of trust. Thank you very much.